Hello Linux fans, Rob here with Linux Quest and another episode of Quest Byte News where we share just a bite of news from the Linux world. So let's jump in with everyone's favorite. Microsoft has fortified their commitment to open source. Oh my. So they have become a Linux Foundation Platinum member. Now, I've already seen remarks back and forth in various forums and various discussions about, you know, scoffing at Microsoft or ridiculing Microsoft and, and that kind of thing. And I get it. There are a lot of people who absolutely hate Microsoft. Now, I for one see this as a good thing, and I just want to explain why. Number one, a large tech company like Microsoft uh, becoming a platinum member of the Linux Foundation has certainly put a spotlight on the Linux Foundation. Uh, it's made news in the, uh, you know, the tech blogs and uh, tech sites throughout. So that's a good thing because you know, you've got a nice big focus on the Linux Foundation and what's going on there. Also, Microsoft, of course, has very deep pockets and lots of resources. So, you know, if this turns out to be a true um, positive two-way street, I see that as a good thing. Time will tell. Um, you know, I'm not going to uh, form judgment on Microsoft at this point. Uh, ever since Satya Nadella became uh, head of Microsoft, you know, there have been articles here and there about Microsoft's commitment to Linux slash open source uh, work. And so, uh, you know, this is certainly a big step. Again, I think the spotlight on the Linux Foundation is good. And, you know, if they uh, put the right kind of resources to this, I think in the end this could really be a good thing. So I see it as positive news, but that's my take. All right, let's move on to news that's less positive. Uh, this is an article on ZDNet from Stephen Vaughn Nichols. It's a very good article about uh, kind of a negative thing, which is another security hole. You know, a few weeks ago, we uh, all heard about Dirty Cow, um, you know, which was not good. Uh, I think it made a lot of news simply from the, the name of the exploit. But uh, at any rate, it you know, not good and has already been resolved in most cases. Now, this is a security hole. And I kind of uh, snickered a little here at the start of the article. Sometimes Linux users can be smug about their system security. Well, you know, it's kind of like, okay, really? But anyway, it's a great article. It's a good read here. Um, as he goes on to explain how you can access the security hole. So it's basically the um, the Linux Unified Key Setup on Disk Format, or LUX. And so uh, they go on to say here that it affects Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise, as well as SUSE Enterprise. Now there's no mention here of Arch, so I'd have to read into that to see, uh, dig a little deeper there to see if Arch is affected by this. Now I want to go on here, and again, this goes on to tell you how you would access this and everything. I'm sure this was from three days ago. I'm sure that this is being worked on already, but there is uh, another part here that I want to point out to you. So what's even more annoying is that this only works if you've encrypted your system partition. So, by doing the smart thing of using encryption, you've actually opened the door to this attack. Fun. So, um, you know, if, if your system partition is not encrypted the way I read this, then you have no issues as far as this particular security hole is concerned. So, uh, again, I'll have the uh, notes and or links to the video notes section for all of these articles. All right, let's move on to the Linux kernel. And so for those of you who like to follow the Linux kernel, Pharonix is a great source uh, for keeping track of what's going on with the Linux kernel. And uh, here we're talking about 4.10 and 4.9 hasn't even been released yet, but there are some good things on the horizon for 4.10. So uh, to start, uh, make Wi-Fi fast improvements are expected to begin arriving with 4.10. And I'm all about faster Wi-Fi. So that's certainly good news. And then they're talking about uh, Turbo Boost Max support being finally merged. Uh, generic governor support for Intel P state is a likely candidate. No confirmation there. And then uh, BTRFS is expected to have more internal changes as well as F2FS uh, where they are working on native multiple device support. I'm going to skip over a few here. They talk about better power management and a new VM manager. 
Um, so let's move on down here because they also go on to talk about a couple of drivers. So lots of churn to the Intel DRM driver and they are um, going to continue to work for the Gen 9 and ladder. Also the ZTE XZ DRM driver is going to be added and the all winter A31 support um, for its DRM display driver. So um, actually a good lineup here for 410 um, you know, and then you could link from there if you'd like to go back over to 4.9, which they see will be released in about three weeks. Now, uh, thanks to a new Linux Quest subscriber and viewer, uh, Gabriel, he brought up an interesting point. In fact, it's the first time anyone kind of brought up this point to me within Linux Quest, which is where do you see uh, GNU or GNU Linux heading? Do you think it has grown? Do you think it's stagnated, uh, or do you think you know GNU Linux is losing market share? And so that was you know that kind of got my uh, gears turning, and I wanted to do a little research there uh, based on that short discussion. And so the next article here, uh, again, we'll have all the links. This is from Net Market Share Analytics. Uh, so this is analytics without bots. And it appears that for the first time ever, um, GNU Linux has reached a uh, milestone here. They have gone over the 2% market share. So they, they're quoting here, uh, and this was from uh, June 2016. So that's as far as we go. They go all the way back to July of 2014 and up to June of 2016. So for the first time ever, GNU Linux has surpassed the 2% market share, which shows growth. Now, my understanding is from this data, uh, you know, you have to know the background of data that you're looking at, but my understanding is, is this does exclude Android. So Android was not included. Um, I need to confirm whether or not it includes Chrome OS. I don't think so. I think if it included Chrome OS, we would see a larger jump uh, than what we see here. Uh, but that has not been confirmed. At any rate, that does show growth. But again, it's very hard to verify, um, you know, GNU Linux growth. I mean, we could look at numbers from the perspective of how many servers are set up, you know, running Linux, um, you know, how many devices are using the Linux kernel, that kind of thing. But again, it's very hard to track from a user base standpoint because number one, we have a huge number of <laughs> of distributions out there and it being free and open source uh, you know it's really hard to gauge who uses what when how long they use it and all of those things but this is certainly good news I see this as positive news and then finally let's go ahead and wrap things up with an interesting read which I always like to uh, to share with you so this is from Eric Knorr uh, editor-in-chief and uh, in, from InfoWorld, and it's a very good read. Linux at 25, an ecosystem, not only an OS. So, uh, you know, it starts out talking about the celebration of the 25th birthday of Linux and the new generation of open source projects, Linux enabled. So, you know, there's a lot to talk about here and there's a lot to think about. And this is a fun read. So again, if you, uh, you know, if you enjoy reading about the history of certain things and, and you know, contemplating where it may head, um, this is a good read. You know, Linux is m so much more than, than what we see in our various operating de uh, desktop operating systems. Uh, Linux today is running in all forms of electronics and kiosk and, you know, servers and, and behind the scenes in devices that, you know, many people aren't even aware that that's that's what's running in the background. So if you you think about a lot of these um, streaming devices, uh, you know, um, so you've got media boxes, everything from Roku to um, you know some of these newer uh, gaming slash streaming devices. If you look into what is running there, a lot of times you're going to find that Linux is involved. Anyway, this is a fun read because it puts a lot of things kind of in perspective and it was also eye-opening here. And so here's part of the article I'm going to share with you. Over the years, Linux has grown in another way. 
the sheer scale of its community development operation, uh, Jim Zimlin, executive director of the Linux Foundation, recently offered me some awe-inspiring stats. All right, so this is something else. This was an eye-opener. There are 53,000 source files in the Linux kernel. 21 million lines of code. There are 3,900 developers from all around the globe with 10,800 lines of code are added. 53,000 lines of code are removed and 1,800 lines of code are modified every single day. So think about that a minute. 10,800 lines of code are added 5,300 lines of code are removed, and 1,800 lines of code are modified every single day in the Linux kernel. It changes seven or eight times an hour on average every day, 365 days a year. That is prolific, it's tremendous scale, and it's unparalleled in the history of software development. Folks, that's huge. That's staggering. It, you know, When you think about those kinds of numbers, it just it boggles the mind that here we are running a free and open source operating system with that kind of activity in place and we just load it up and things work 99% of the time you you know you may have a few tweaks or bugs or issues here or there it's amazing that this all happens with this kind of numbers in the background that this all comes together it's truly a huge huge feat so just that specific section of this article there was a tremendous eye-opener. And it gives me hope and promise for the future of open source and for the future of GNU Linux. So, again, good read here. And, uh, you know, it doesn't go on for 15 or 20 pages, so you can get through it pretty quickly. And, again, it's kind of an eye-opener. So, Eric, uh, Eric Knorr there, great article. Uh, in sharing that info. All right, well, that's it for Quest Byte News. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and we will check you later.